Good morning, grade 10s, and welcome to STEM Lockdown Digital School. My name is Sibusiso Masombuga, and I'll be your grade 10 life orientation educator. I would like to welcome all the learners that are watching on YouTube. Welcome to all the learners that are joining us on Microsoft Teams. And um, it's also good to see some familiar faces as well. Uh, please follow African Team Geeks on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook to find out how you can get connected uh, to bridge the gap uh, that we have right now in education in South Africa due to COVID-19. Um, today we're going to be focusing on, uh, we're going to be continuing with chapter seven uh, that we started with last week um, and we're focusing on study skills. Last week we had a look at the different learning styles as well as the different study methods and there's some few study methods that I would like to share with you today and I think these will be very, very helpful in helping you prepare for exams. And then tomorrow, we'll have a chance at looking at all the different examination skills, writing skills that you guys will need in order to ace those exams, because that's exactly what we need for you to ace those exams. And to sort of, like I said, bridge the gap that you guys have right now in education. So please interact with me. Let me know if you have any questions please pop them in on the Q&A and I will be able to answer them. There is a 40 second delay, um, but do not worry, but I will attend to all your questions as soon as possible. At the end of the lesson, you guys will learn uh, study methods. We're going to be looking at note taking, mind mapping, summaries, and how to construct an essay. All right, uh, remember what I said to you guys that we all have different learning styles and our learning styles uh, also have, have a a big link uh, with our personality as well. Remember I said to you that introverted learners have a different way of learning uh, in comparison to extroverted learners who are more stimulated by what is happening around them. So do not worry if you think that a particular learning skill or, or study skill or study method that you guys will learn to get today will not uh, match up with your personality. We're going to um, cover all the different study skills and methods that have worked out for students all around the world. So please tune in or listen in carefully. All right, so let's look at the keywords and some of these we looked at yesterday, but these keywords will help us uh, in identifying some of the study methods. Um, so the first one is study methods. Study methods are the ways in which you study, learn and remember information. And in similarities is a quality that makes one person or thing like another. All right, and then compare, compare means to see how ideas, things, or people are the same or similar. And then a contrast is to see how ideas, things, or people are different. All right, so please keep, be cognizant of these keywords because we're going to be looking at them later on. And don't despair, uh, I will be um, referring to them a lot today again. Now let's have a, a bit of a, a recap of the different learning styles that you guys know of. So you guys know of visual learning style. You guys learned these in grade eight. You know about auditory learning style as well as kinesthetic learning style. Now let's have a look at what how lear, how visual learning um, style learners uh, learn for exams or study for exams. Or this is if you think that you are a visual learner, this is how you should study for exams. All right, or for tests. Um, they draw a mind map a mind map of events or a spider diagram make outlines of everything to draw the eye, copy what's on the board in your, in your own words with colored pens or in a mind map, ask the teacher to make a diagram, draw a mind map with sentences, take colorful notes, make lists with diagrams, watch videos. A lot of the videos that you guys have uh, or watch on, on YouTube and on, and on Microsoft Teams, uh, the visual learning uh, style learners are the ones that are being stimulated the most and then um, use flashcards, use highlighters as well. We're going to be looking at how you guys can do mind maps as well as flashcards uh, in a couple of slides to come up next. All right, let's look at auditory learning uh, style. And these are the learners who learn by hearing stuff, all right, or hearing information. Uh, they use word association and remember facts and lines. Uh, they record lessons, they watch videos, repeating facts with closed eyes, take part in group discussions as well. So these are the learners who also use role playing as a learning style uh, or as a learning mechanism or method. And um, again, 
if you're watching this right now and you are being uh, stimulated, um, your auditory is, is, being, is being stimulated right now. And then kinesthetic learners, which are learners who learn by moving around or doing things, these learners study better in short breaks by taking lab classes, you know, in, in life sciences and in, in, um, in physical sciences and ET, electrical technology, and as well as EGD, you guys um, do practical. So these are the learners that are being stimulated here. They take field trips by vi visiting museums. These learners I remember I, I, I used to be an auditory learner when I was in school, and I remember in life science in grade 12, we went to the Mahopeng, the cradle of humankind, because we were studying evolution. And can I tell you something? I actually understood it better than when my teacher taught it to me in class. All right? These, these learners also learn better by role playing, and then they also learn better by studying with others in, group, in groups, uh, using memory games, and using flashcards to memorize as well. So could you please um, drop me um, something on the chat box or on the Q&A and let me know which sort of learning styles you use. And guys, like I said, you can use all three of these learning styles whilst you're, you're, whilst you're learning as uh, they are effective and can be used for almost every single subject. Obviously with mathematics, you guys will use the reading and writing or what is called the logical learning style. All right, cool. Um, let's have a look at note taking. Note taking, uh, these learners listen, um, you listen with the aim, know what, uh, what you want to learn from the talk or the lesson. They use abbreviations and symbols, for example, and instead of uh, the symbol and instead of the word and, a smiley face instead of uh, writing the positive effects. All right. Um, write down only the main points, make short notes, group ideas together, use your own words and highlight and underline important facts. We're going to be I'm going to be explaining further on the note taking as we go along as well. All right. And then I want us to look at organizing and managing our time. And I know we spoke about this l uh, last week, Friday as well. It, guys, it's so important for you guys to always have a study plan and a study timetable so that you can schedule your study, your study time um, and also accommodating your social life as well as all the other ext extracurricular activities that you guys do in school because there's nothing like a well-balanced learner. You can't be studying all the time, you can't be socializing all the time and you can't just be um, doing extracurricular uh, activities as well. You need to be well-balanced so that your social side is um, uh, is, is stimulated, your, 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 your physical side is uh, stimulated by doing uh, exercises, your emotional well-being is stimulated by meditating and praying uh, or, any, or any other spiritual activities that you guys do, as well as your health as well. So, so, so important. All right, let's have a look at drawing up a study timetable or managing your time. You need to draw up a study timetable or a schedule. Guys, use your study, your, your, your timetable, your normal timetable that you get at school and incorporate this when you do your annual study timetable. You can also incorporate all the other timetables that you guys get in your school, like your cycle test timetable, as well as your exam timetable. These will help you quite a lot. And I always say, guys, if you spend about 20 hours per week on studying, you should be able to get uh, all the work or be able to learn better without putting a whole lot of pressure on yourself because the last thing that you want or the last thing that you need is to be anxious and be fearful during your exams because that can hinder on your performance as well. It says here, the second bullet point says you need to balance your study time to the rest uh, and have uh, to rest and to also have fun. A lot of learners think that studying all throughout the whole night will help them out, cross nighting. I think that is just one method that does not work because it's so important for us to have the eight hours of sleep each and every day. How the brain works is that with all the information that you've learned and all the knowledge that you've learned throughout the day, when you sleep, the brain actually works. And I'm saying this in lame in terms of course, it actually puts everything that you've learned into nice little shelves and folders so that when you are when you want to retrieve the information again in a test or an exam or an activity in class, you're able to do so. If you do not sleep, it really does distort your memory and you retrieving the information back. So make sure that each and every day you have about seven to eight hours of sleep. And obviously, 
with eating healthy as well, which we spoke about last week. All right. It says here, take regular short breaks. Make time for these breaks in your schedule. So you need to schedule the breaks in, in your study plan as well. So, for example, if you're saying that you're studying from um, 8 until 12 o'clock, Make sure that you study from 8 to 8.55 so that you can at least have a five-minute break and then you can start again from 9 to 9.55 and then you have another uh, study break and then um, you start at 10 to 10.55, another short break. And in these short breaks, you guys can stretch, walk around the house, take a water break. Um, but I do not encourage you that in your short breaks that you go on your WhatsApp or your Facebook or your Instagram because we know how we could always stall on that. I mean, I'm even struggling with that at my old age as well. So please make sure that you do something very constructive that is going to not distract you from your studying as well. So, so important for you to take your breaks. Guys, the brain, how your brain, your concentration span can only last you up and, oh, at your age uh, for about 40 minutes, so about 45 minutes. So please make sure that you take the breaks as well. It's so, so important. All right. Try to spend more time on subjects that you battle with. Decide, so you need to learn how to prioritize. Spending time on subjects that you battle with, that is prioritizing, all right? And then you also just need to decide what time of the day you have the most energy and are able to concentrate best. Some people study better early in the morning or in the evening as well. See, I am one of those people, I'm nocturnal. I, I prefer to study at night because there's less distractions at night. Um, and that's basically when I, I'm, I'm more energized. Um, whereas I'm, I'm actually not a morning person at all. So you could just be like me or you could be the opposite of me, but you need to find what works for you. All right. And then the next bullet point says you need to keep all the things that help you study in one place, such as your dictionary, your pens, your highlighters and scrap paper. So you guys need to make sure that before you even study that you have all the material that you need. You can't be sitting at your study desk and then your business studies notes are with uh, Tato who's in your business class and now you have to go on WhatsApp and he needs to take a picture for you. It's just not going to work out and it's just going to mess up your study schedule. And it's, you know, it's, that is when you are being counter uh, productive. So make sure that you have your dictionary there, your pens there, your highlighters and scrap paper so that you have everything in one little space. And guys, always make sure that the space in which you're studying in is always clean, and all is tidy so that it's also easy for you to find things. There's nothing more therapeutic than cleaning around um, and working in a space that is organized and well sorted out. I know some of us may have habits of, 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 of being a little untidy, but we need to learn this with uh, organizing and managing our time. Keep away from things that distract you from studying, for example, TV, radio, cell phones, and noisy people. Um, and also, you can also put a do not disturb sign, obviously in a very respectful manner, so that people do not distract you whilst you are studying. And put your phone on, air, uh, on airplane mode so that you don't uh, get distracted by all the notifications and all that stuff. And studying in front of a TV is a big, big no-no. All right, let's have a look and let's revise on some of the study skills um, that we are going to learn today. So uh, uh, one study skill that you guys could use is flashcards. Flashcards are small cards or pieces of paper on which you write key points and short bits of information. So how you create a flashcard is that you take an A4 normal page and then you cut it up in four different pieces or cards uh, that are all the same size. You do not write uh, too much on each card. You can also carry these cards with uh, you as you revise the formulas, dates, definitions, anywhere and at any time, such as while you're waiting for a bust or standing in a queue. Guys, I still use this at this day and age. I think flashcards are very, very helpful. And on your flashcards, you write very important information and just the keywords, and obviously in your nice summarized uh, version of it. All right. So uh, let me know if you guys like to use flashcards in the Q&A. I would like to find out from you as to whether or not this would work out for you as well. And guys, also make your flashcards very colorful. Use orange, yellow, green um, cardboard because we all know that our brain loves color. It is attracted to color. Think of all the adverts that are colorful that attract our brains and, you know, uh, they keep us interested and keen to study all the time. So flashcards are one way of studying. Another way of studying is by using mind maps. Mind maps link information.
information in a logical way that will help you remember. Take break. Uh, they break large pieces of information into small, smaller, manageable sizes. So I know a lot of you may be a little um, uh, worried about this one because mind maps can be quite cluttered. So if it doesn't work for you, you do not have to use a study method or the study skill. For example, here I've put up here. You know, in 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 English and in Afrikaans, whatever other language that you guys do, or in other subjects as well, you're always told before you write an essay that you need to have a mind map. This also helps with planning and how you're going to construct your essays. And we're going to talk about that a little later on when we do essay. But let's have a look at mind maps. So you have the main idea in the middle here. You can another word for mind map is also spider diagram. Um, in Afrikaans, they say it's a spinnacle. Um, so you have your main idea in the middle, and then you have different ideas or different things that could influence this particular idea in different other sections. And then you can obviously add on. So you can add an, er uh, an arrow here to describe certain things. You can add an arrow here to describe certain things as well, an arrow there to describe certain things, an arrow here to, 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 um, to explain further certain things. Now, this gives us an even better understanding on how we can put out everything. And I think this is such an excellent way of studying. I use my map still as well. Um, so you must let me know whether you whether you think uh, mind maps can work or not. For example, here, if you are given an essay and they said to you, write an essay on unemployment in South Africa. Now, we all know that these things that cause uh, unemployment, so these reasons for unemployment, there you have it there, such as um, jobs not being available in South Africa, uh, such as um, these, 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 these things like seasonal unemployment, uh, where jobs are only available at a particular season or a particular time. And then you can also look at the effects of unemployment. So this is what happens when you're unemployed. All right, so you can further explain there. And then here you've got government intervention. So what can the government do to try and curb in unemployment in South Africa? What, it, what can government do to try and prevent unemployment in South Africa? And then here you then have your solutions to unemployment, such as creating more jobs, having more entrepreneurial subjects in school to help curb unemployment. So you guys can have a look at that. All right. All right. Moving on along swiftly, let's look at how you can construct an essay. Very link. Uh, it, it links very well with a mind map because when you write an essay, you can um, uh, use a mind map to plan for your essay, just like how I've done here. All right. Uh, with constructing an essay, you guys need to understand the topic, and we're going to. I'm going to go through an exam writing skill with you, where we're going to be practicing how to write an essay in an exam especially for a life orientation as well, because a lot of learners think that an essay you need to write bullet points. They don't know whether or not they need to have an introduction or not, uh, as well as a conclusion. So we're going to be having a look at that next lesson. All right, you need to understand what the topic is about. Then you need to plan your task or your essay. Then you need to come up with an introduction that is going to introduce the topic, whether you could use a definition of unemployment or stats of unemployment, to try and gauge the person that is going to be reading your essay because you want to keep them interested as well. And then in your body of your essay, we know that the body of the essay must have different paragraphs and each paragraph must have a main idea. So make sure that your essays have paragraphs um, and then each paragraph has a main idea. Uh, just like how I've had it here. So your one paragraph could have the causes of unemployment. So, so let me give you an, an example. With unemployment, let's say the essay topic is unemployment. You would then start off or introduce the topic by defining what unemployment is, all right, and having some statistics there if you would like to add some. And then your second paragraph, would then, which then would be the first paragraph of your body, would be then you discussing the causes of unemployment. And then you would link that nicely with the effects of unemployment and then link that nicely with the government intervention uh, to unemployment as well as the uh, solutions, and then you can come up with your conclusion, conclu with your concluding points, because that is when the person that is marking your essay also wants to find out, do you understand what you've just written? Are you able to give examples, as many examples as possible, to, to show that you are able to apply yourself in this entire essay? Then, in your essay, you need to show what you know. How do you show what you know? By giving us as many examples as 
possible. And then another thing that is also quite difficult to do um, is to keep to the topic. Sometimes you have too many ideas, but when you have a mind map, then you are able to keep to the topic even better. All right. Write a conclusion at the end of the essay where you, with your concluding points, your opinions, how you see, how, how you see the, 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 the future of that particular topic. Um, and so in your essay, you, your, your body is it's normally discursive. And then in your, in your conclusion, that is when you then give us your concluding points. I hope that you guys find that very, very helpful as well. But like I said, we'll give you more examples next, uh, in the next lesson. All right, let's have a look at making comparisons. All right, I've, I've just got a, a, a few hints with, in terms of mind maps as well, is that you need to use your own words and you can also use pictures, all right? You can use colors um, and different kinds of pens to make your mind map fun and easy to read. You can be, make use of different colors and different headings as well as ideas. Uh, use thin and thick lines. Uh, and short and uh, and short and long lines just to describe certain things. Sorry, just to backtrack there on um, creating mind maps. Now let's look at making comparisons. All right. So now um, to compare again, like I defined it earlier, is to look at two or more things or people and identify as way and identify ways in which they are the same and or they are different. If you compare, you look at uh, more at the ways. Uh, they are the same or similarities or at the differences uh, than at the differences. Sorry. To compare is, to, is an organizing skill. It helps you to arrange information so you can use it well. Your words that uh, show similarities are, are words such as all, also, as well as, as with, both, equally, in case, in each case, in the same way as, just as, likewise, and similarly. So when your examiners use these words, then you know that they're asking you to make a comparison. But I'm also going to be teaching you uh, in the next lesson how uh, the different words and verbs that the examiners use whilst um, um, coming up with all these different exam questions. And then let's have a look at to contrast. To contrast means to compare two or more things uh, to show how they are different. If you contrast, you focus on differences and not similarities. And words to show differences are words such as alternatively, but, while, conversely, despite, different from, elsewhere, even if, however, in contrast, in position to, instead of, nevertheless, on the contrary, on the other hand, otherwise, the opposite, and the reverse. I hope you guys will be able. And guys, it's so important for you to also remember that you can't compare pears and apples. All right, You always need to make sure that you compare things that are almost the same or different from each other as well. All right, let's have a look at this. So I've got a little uh, diagram right here and it shows this is the differences between the differences between a leader or leading and managing. What you see in the middle, those are the comparisons. Those are the things that are similar to each other. What you see on this side and on this side is the contrast the differences. All right. So what makes a leader and a manager similar to each other is that they want to accomplish a goal, explain a vision, organization, uh, organization figureheads, motivate others, and to mobilize resources. All right. So it's so important for you to understand this. And this in the middle shows similarities. And this right here shows the difference between a leader or leading and managing. I hope you guys uh, find that very, very helpful um, as well. Now, now, let's have a look at mnemonics. This is actually also one of my other favorites. I, I'm sure you guys can tell how much I like to study. Um, and it's because I've made it fun. I've made it my, uh, my I, I, I've, I've sort of adopted it and made it my own thing. You know, and the only way you can enjoy studying is if you make it your own thing. Um, so I want you guys to take all these ideas and study skills that I'm teaching you today and be able to apply it into your own life. A mnemonic is something such as a word or a sentence or a song that helps you to remember something. For example, to, I remember I used to use this when I was in school. I couldn't, I couldn't spell rhyme and, and, and rhythm. And this is how I could rem remember. Rhythm helps, so rhythm, which is the R, helps age your 
uh, which is the Y, two hips move. And obviously rhythm helps us move. It's, it's, we, we move to rhythm, we dance to rhythm as well. So this was an easy, nice way for me to remember um, how to spell rhythm. And I remember I, I struggled with maths, and I still do, um, and how I remembered Bodmus, um, or, 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 or the, the order of calculation was, uh, bless my dear Aunt Sally, which the B stands for brackets, the A, uh, um, sorry, the M stands for multiplications, the D for dear stands for divisions, and the A for, a, uh, for addition stands, uh, sorry, for aunt is addition, and the S for Sally is then subtractions. And then that is when I knew that uh, when I do my calculations, brackets, um, sorry, uh, we need to multiply, divide, and, uh, uh, add, and subtract in that order as well. All right, and then another one that I like to use when I was still doing business studies on how I remember the four management tasks, which is planning, organizing, leading, and control, is that Balissa only likes coffee. That is how I remember that. And obviously, I was able to further explain it because I obviously studied and made short summaries for myself. I hope you guys find this very, very, very helpful as well. And then another one is summaries. So you guys learn how to write summaries in your language subjects as well. Um, summaries, we all know that you summarize the main idea. You need to find out what the main topics are or the main idea is and obviously summarize it by also putting it in your own words. It's quite useless and redundant for you to memorize and uh, learn through your teacher's notes. You also need to make uh, to, 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 to turn the notes into your own words so that it's easier for you to understand because some of us do not have a vocabulary that is quite big and you might be able to, you might uh, struggle with, uh, with certain words as well. So with summaries as well, you also need to sit with your dictionary so that you can uh, find synonyms as well as um, alternate words that you guys can use that are easier to remember. When studying for exams, you cannot study everything as there is usually a lot of information for each subject. So this means that you need to choose the core or most important concepts um, of I or ideas and content to study. Look at the headings and subheadings and the key words as well. Last week, I spoke to you about skimming and scanning. And I said to you that, um, sorry, I, I said to you that uh, when you move your eyes quickly over reading material until you find the main piece or the piece of information that you're looking for. That is what we know as scanning. And then um, when you are skimming, this is when you look quickly at the headings and at the main idea in each paragraph. This is what we call skimming. Also very important for us to use both those devices. And then another way of studying, this is how I studied life science when I was still in school, is by using tables, tabulating everything. All right, tables help you to organize information in a logical and connected way. Also use only keywords or short bits of information. And obviously when you write an essay, you're not gonna use a short bit of words or information. You're going to write as much as possible. All right, so obviously lifestyle diseases, we have them all here. We've got cervical cancer, lung cancer, and TB. These are all lifestyle diseases. And then um, there's always a, a link between the causes, the prevention, and how we can treat it as well. So when you organize your work like this, it makes it easier for you to understand. And you guys can see, I have no sentences written here. It's literally just keywords to help remember the information. All right, other uh, study skills that you guys can um, refer to or use is talking and listening. Read your notes out loud. Discuss your material with others in pairs or groups. Discuss, discuss, describe the diagrams to yourself. Listen carefully to your teacher. And then also by moving about, uh, walk around while you're reading or repeating your material. And then again, I'm going to say it again, be colorful, guys. The brain loves color. Use different colors to highlight important points in your notes or on your flashcards as well. Try and not highlight in your textbooks or making notes in your textbooks because we all know that the textbooks are free and the next learner, uh, who, the next learner is going to be in grade 10, so you might need to use a textbook. So you also want it, you also want it to be user friendly as well. Another study skill that you guys can use is studying to music or rhythm. This does not work for everyone, but some learners study better with uh, soft music in the background, make mnemonics in the form of a song as well. Guys, I also like to study 
to classical music as well. I'm one of those people that can't study in a lot of noise. I've also can't study listening to like different sorts of music. I study better by listening to classical music because it soothes me, it relaxes me, and it's just very calming as well. Here's another one is role playing, either by yourself or with others. Role play what you need to study. I also, you know, like I said, personality, I used to uh, teach it to my mirror each and every time, whatever content that I learn. And that it would also help me to remember things as well. You can also record yourself uh, uh, whilst you're staying in the notes so you can see how you've improved and remember stuff better. All right. Let's look at other uh, let's look at the study strategies that you guys can use. We spoke about a study plan, and we also st spoke about staying um, studying in a very quiet or peaceful and a tidy place. And we also spoke about being organized, having all the material and all the equipment that you need to study as well. All right, and then I want to find out if there's any questions from you guys. I would like to find out from you. I'm gonna um, go on to my chat box to see if there are any questions. All right. All right. I don't see any questions there today. Um, is the site called Quizlet that has flashcards? Uh, games, etc. It is good in case anyone wanted to know. Thank you so much, Oli, for letting us know. Thank you so, so much. Um, all right, um, Anonymous, um, your, the, 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 the slides are going to be available on the African Teen Geeks website. Also on my Google Classroom, I will share the Google Classroom code with you shortly so that you guys can have um, these slides as well. So do not despair. Um, and I hope that you guys were able to hear me, well, at least for most of it. All right. Um, yeah. So thank you so much once again for uh, tuning into my lesson. Uh, unfortunately, that is all I have for you guys today. Study methods. Guys, please email me any questions. Uh, if you have any questions with regards to studying and how you can improve, if you're battling with certain concepts and how you can break it down for yourself, please let me know and I'll be able to answer you. I've been getting a lot of feedback. Learners are emailing me. And um, last week when we, did, when we did study timetable, a few of you sent me your study timetables and I was able to change and tweak up, uh, them uh, to, to, to better suit you because some of you guys actually wanted to study until the, uh, the cows came back. Um, but obviously, remember, guys, you need to take as many breaks as possible. Eat healthy. Remember, omega-3 is brain food, um, fish, sardines, um, Blueberries are also good for you. Nuts. Um, those are all the food that is all that is all the food that is good for you whilst you're studying. Using energy drinks, I discourage that wholeheartedly. Um, those only help you keep you up, but they don't do not help you concentrate. And last week we spoke about concentration skills and how to concentrate. So please make sure that you are eating healthy and that you're exercising and you're keeping fit because uh, the brain and the body works better. You become less tired whilst you're active and eating healthy. And then I also want to say this to you, that it is not going to be easy, but it will certainly be worth it. So continue to study and start now, guys. Don't wait for when schools come back, uh, open again. Don't wait for when um, you get your exam timetable or, or your cycle test timetable. Always make sure that you start studying from your first lesson on. And guys, like I said, a lot of the studying takes place, or a lot of the learning takes place whilst you are in class. So when your teacher is in front and they're teaching you important concepts, whether you think it's important or not, it's so imperative for you to listen in and be active and listen actively as well and to take part in lessons. I find that a lot of the learning that I do takes place whilst I'm in class because whilst I'm studying, I use that as revising and turning information into my own words and into my own understanding and I've got a little cute um, picture there or a meme that says the experts in anything was once a beginner so if you ever feel like you're feeling overwhelmed or the work is becoming too much um, do not feel uh, do not be disheartened uh, we all had to start somewhere and um, you know nobody is a master at anything we are all learning and we are all finding different ways of learning 
I'm going to check if there's any other questions in the Q&A box. Um, okay. Um, all right. Good to see some of the other learners who joined us from Zoom. Um, thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, let me look at uh, other... All right. I hope you guys were also able to hear me. Uh, otherwise, if you guys were struggling to hear me or struggling or battling with this lesson today, you guys can always watch this on YouTube as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to share with you uh, the Google Classroom um, code. So tomorrow we're going to be focusing on uh, examination writing skills, like I said. And we're going to be looking and I'm going to have practice questions for you, how to tackle multiple choice questions. Uh, uh, short questions as well as long questions like your essays as well and then guys thank you so much for joining me please uh, let me know what you guys thought of today's lesson follow me on instagram and on facebook and uh, twitter zbu underscore m you can follow africa teen geeks um, on twitter instagram and facebook as well as our, uh, the department of education uh, uh, um, handle and then you guys can use uh, the STEM Champions Lockdown eSchool Cecil Foundation. And you guys can email me if you guys need any help. My email address is sibusisomasumbuka at ymail.com. And then the Google Classroom code where you guys will be able to have access to all these notes as well. Alternatively, you can get them on the Africa Teen Geeks website. The Google Classroom code is C2KA3IC. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you all tomorrow, bright and early at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.